So we hear the HHI, and who are you? My name is Thomas. Hi, welcome. You're at the Time Lab here, tomorrow's Immersive Media Experience Laboratory, and it's basically a panoramic projection. Um, actually, it's a multi projection. We have seven HD projectors in the ceiling, as you can see when I switch them off one by one. See that now here. You see, we project in portrait format, and we have overlapping areas between every two pictures, which we can render out of the picture in real time on a dedicated hardware, the so-called Cine card. And we have seven of these Cine cards in one PC upstairs and can, uh, with these technologies in one PC, we can render all pictures for 14 projectors, which we use for 3D. We have passive 3D system. And combined with this panoramic projection, here's an immersive audio system as well, based on wave field synthesis. Um, Emergent, what do you say? Immersive. Immersive audio. Immersive audio reproduction system based on wave field synthesis, exactly. From our um, uh, partner Fraunhofer IDMT installed, this is a cooperation project between HHI and IDMT. So we have 120 loudspeaker channels all around the room as well behind the screen, which is uh, acoustically transparent. And with these uh, lots of loudspeakers, we can render an acoustic sound field into the room, which is really close to natural hearing. So it doesn't matter anymore where you stand. You can move around the room freely as you can do usually and you will always locate the sound sources where they should be and they don't move with you when you move. As well you can put sound objects because it's an object based format in the room so they appear to be in between you and the loudspeakers which is not possible with any other reproduction system as well. Um, additionally here we have loudspeakers in the ceiling so it's a real 3D audio reproduction system. And Real 3D, not like, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, echo 3D stuff. Exactly, yeah. it's not working with reflec reflections or something, but we have really spe speakers in the ceiling. So, wave field synthesis plus ceiling extension, 3D audio. So, so right now we see some uh, flowers, what do you call those? Yeah, these are Co sunflowers, I would say. Sunflowers? Mm -hmm. And uh, sunflowers, what else do you show? Let's see we something show, cool. We show movies as well. How much well. do you have? Oh, we have lots of stuff. We did lots of productions in the last years with um, different um, stages of omnidirectional cameras. Maybe I show you one of the early versions right here. So you launch it with a tablet? Yeah, this is just HTML surface controls okay. the Cinebox upstairs. So here you see a really early version of the Omnicam. And it, fe it features six HD cameras in this version. And they point up upwards to the mirror rig. So the mirror rig is necessary because we want the camera to be in one optical point. Um, if we don't do it like that, for example, as Google Street View does, they have a star-like figure, there's a distance between every two cameras, and then um, we have different perspectives on the environment, and sometimes um, if objects get too close to the two cameras, they're missing, there's distortion in the picture. But with the mirrors, we are able to put all the cameras in one optical focal point, and so we can stitch the pictures uh, smooth, seamlessly, even for objects that are really close to the camera system. So are you saying it's stitched 100% perfectly, or is there still, because each mirror is in one angle, is that good enough? Yeah, that, that actually works good enough, yeah. Um, so we have a small overlapping areas, just a couple of pixels between every two cameras, and um, we are we're able to stitch that together with the software, yeah. Don't ask me how exactly it works, I'm from the audio department, but it works, as you will see. If I show you um, the content that we shot here in Dortmund, we shot like a Premier League soccer match. Oh, for real? For real, yeah. Bundesliga? Bundesliga, yeah, first league. And Which match? This was Borussia Dortmund versus Hoffenheim, I think it was in 2009. So. Uh, my father probably watched that match. Alright, so does it work? Is it loading? It's loading. It takes a couple of seconds. There it is. Yeah, this is really cool. It's uh, all over the place. Like best of this guy, because he knows he gets filmed. Yeah, he knows. He works 
at HHI? No, he This is really awesome. It's, an, it's not 4K, it's not 8K or something. What is this? 6K, um, we shot in 6K. 6K? Yeah. 1080p, 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 1080p. What is it? How, is it, how, is it, can, it, how can it be 6K? So we use six HD cameras in the, in the rig, so it's a six times HD um, picture here. The quality of the cameras we used, I said it like it was 2009, the camera was from 2008, already a couple of years ago, so technology improved since then, because 2008 there were not really small HD cameras available on the market, we need small cameras for a mirror rig like that. So, but time went on, in the last year we were able to improve the camera uh, system a lot, um, and we used it for example in the production with the Berlin Philharmonics, which oh, I want yeah. to show you next, at least an excerpt. And here you see another mirror rig, it's a little bit bigger, actually it's the size probably of an American fridge. And here we have um, six Ari Alexa M cameras, which are professional pro um, cinema cameras. These are the best cameras. You say so, yeah. 1080p, no? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And have really high dynamic range, which is important for us, especially with this uh, panoramic, panoramic format, because we can't adjust um, the, the settings for the sensi uh, sensitivity um, for every mirror, we need one setting for all the cameras. And so if it's really bright on the one side and really dark on the, on the other side, we could get problems with uh, cameras that, are not, uh, that don't have a high dynamic range, but these offer um, this. And in the M version, which has been developed specifically with and for James Cameron, this camera gets small enough to be put on a mirror rig. So we are really lucky to uh, be able to do that in a cooperation with Ari and in a cooperation with DVS and lots of other partners. Um, and shoot um, a performance of the Berlin Philharmonics together with Sascha Walz. Um, it was part of the education program of Sir Simon Rattle. And so Sascha Walz, the choreographer, did this uh, dance piece with 120 Berlin students um, and the Berlin Philharmonics played music of Carmen. So and the, uh, so the Philharmonics is, the, we see the orchestra or we see the dance or what? We see the dancer. It's about Only the, the dancer, not the orchestra? In this piece we don't see the orchestra. I could show you another one where we are in the Philharmonic building, where we see the orchestra in the picture and where we are as well um, hear the orchestra. But it was shot with the older camera. But just lately, a couple of weeks ago, we've been back in the Philharmonics building and we shot with a new generation, not this one, a smaller 360 degree camera. We shot the 50th anniversary concert there in 360 degree but the pictures are not yet ready yet because it was just a couple of weeks ago we need the time for post-production how much imagine. more time do you need oh um it was part of a project that will go until 2015 actually so it will be one of three shots we do uh, it's called auto der musik like places of music in berlin and around berlin berlin philharmonics will be part of it then andromeda mega express orchestra which is like um an orchestra for new music, a little bit more electronic music mixed with jazz and classical music. And third will be uh, Rundfunkchor Berlin, which we will shoot 2014. So this whole project will be a 20 minute film and will be finished, we hope, for Berlinale 2015. So, but uh, we need lots of places to watch this. True. Is this so, the only place? No, it's not. That's why um, my colleagues developed the mobile version of this time lap, which is um, actually the same size of projection as well, 7K 2D or 3D projection combined with immersive um, audio reproduction system with uh, 3D capabilities. Not really with 120 speakers as you can imagine for a live situation, this is a little bit too much maybe, but with um, as many speakers as are required to give a good reproduction of the sound. And yeah, we have this as a mobile or transportable, so to say, setup, so um, we can bring it to any place where we want. And as well, we could use it for live transmissions. We're working on 
um, preparing a live transmission with the Berlin Philharmonics, probably to a place in Japan where there could be an installation like this fixed in a room or just the mobile time lap. Awesome. So uh, let's let's watch. Can we, can yes. I watch? How how many hours does it last? Oh, this is about ten minutes, but I can just stop skip after around? a couple. No, I can't no? skip this. You can't skip. No. That doesn't work. But let's watch. Oh, I want to watch the whole thing. Oh, I'm sure I want to watch the whole thing. But uh, you record stereo, not binaural, or do you? Your audio recording stereo, I guess. Yeah. Right? Oh, that's a pity. Experiencing the, all, all the angles right now. It's an experience. Come and check it out. How many other kinds of demos do you have? Do you have other stuff? Yeah, we, I mean, we have lots of stuff with the first generation Omnicam. Um, so, like, this is the only one with the new one? Uh, this is um, the only one we have with the Alexas, right? Yeah. yeah. We, did one other, we did one other production with it in, uh, in London, actually in Royal Albert Hall. Is um, that, is that on your system now? That's not on the system. Now. Okay, it's also post production. Um, it's new. Well, it's, it's fairly new. We didn't, uh, we didn't really. We had in this situation in London. We were pretty far away from the stage, so that the stage itself is like fairly small. And the purpose of the production we did there was a little bit different because it was about navigating in the concert in real time, which is possible. So you can have your, your tablet PC or your iPad, and you can navigate in the 7K material in real time. So navigate in the 7K material in real time. Yeah, does that online. work? That works. But uh, it's under development or what? Oh, it was um, a research project that was going on and the, the, the shooting we did in London was part of a research project, yeah. Right. Let's go to another, some other content. So, would you like to see something in 3D as well? Yeah. Then I switch the system to 3D. It takes one or two minutes. So we're using passive 3D system. Um, it's called Infitech. Um, in the cinemas it's known as Dolby because they licensed it. And so we need glasses. All right. I'll hand you some. What's this uh, statue here? Um, that's a prize um, this project got actually for the yeah. whole technology framework for the projection and the camera te technology. And it's um, called 3D Innovation Award. And it was handed over in Los Angeles just this year to Christian Weisig, the project leader. This. So this is glasses. passive? Oh, it's a ship. Video. All right. 
so it's a 3D, what, what's, what is it going to show? Um, what video I, I will show you, you're asking? Yeah. So due to the fact that the, we, my colleagues did develop a 3D panoramic camera, I can show you a picture of an early version as well. But in the final stage we just finished it lately, so we didn't really do a real shoot with it. We did this proof of concept shooting. Yeah. Um, and as you can see, we're now using two cameras per, uh, per mirror segment, one for the left and one for the right eye. And, um, but there's kind of a problem because, as I said before, we we're using the mirrors, so all the cameras are on the same optical point. But now we need a distance between the, the, the two cameras for the left and right eye for stereoscopic 3D. So this is actually, um, yeah, that doesn't work with each other. But my colleagues figured out a way to manage that with a certain um, <laughs> setting of the cameras and the mirrors and uh, certain steps in post-production so that they can solve that problem. I think I can show you another project, uh, pro um, picture that shows a little bit better what I'm trying to explain. So you see three pictures, but every picture consists of six single pictures, three for the left and three for the right eye. And as you can see, the, picture, the pictures are not only stitched between the mirror segments, but as well between the views for the left and the right eye across the mirror segments. So quite complicated process and setup of the camera and in post-production, so um, it's patented as well. So we are able to build a 360-degree 3D camera, um, which is seamless, so ha has no artifacts. And I guess at the moment no one else is able to do that. We have the camera ready, so if anyone wants to shoot 360-degree 3D, you 360 can help. 360-degree? Up to it's scalable. I mean, if you only need 180, we have a projection for 180 degrees, so that would be sufficient. It's scalable Is there system. any 360 uh, projection systems? Um, well, I mean, we could, we could build one, like the projection system is as scalable as the camera system. Um, I don't know, there are lots of dome projections, I guess. I don't know if there's really 360 degree projection with a high resolution as, as we have here. I don't really know. Right. Is it ready to, to play? I can play. I would um, show you some CGI content because as I said, we were, didn't really shoot yet with the 3D camera. And what I want to show you is a cooperation with um, two Munich-based producers called Lichtmund. And um, we did, in cooperation with them, we did a 7K 3D version with wave field synthesis, 3D sound of one of their pieces of their latest Blu-ray DVD. And this is a cooperation, uh, again, with an American artist who will introduce himself in the beginning of the video. Now we have double the amount of projectors? 14 HD projectors, yeah. Okay. Hello there, everyone at the Fraunhofer Institute and at Time Lab. I'm Alan Parsons, and this next video is a collaboration with Lichtmond, and it's called Precious Life. Hope you enjoy. about seven minutes.
Just stand up and seize the day.